Welcome back to the inventory review. We got some cool new stuff in, some older cars that normally you probably don't see at Marshall Goldman, uh, but some pretty unique uh, older inventory that we'd like to touch on a little bit and you know one or two other new ones. Uh, the one we've got right behind me is, as most probably know, is, is it's gad gathered some fame as a recent, not that it needed any help, but a Di Tommaso Pantera. Uh, these cars are just absolutely epically cool to me. Uh, this was what happened when you gave an Italian designer the go ahead to build a car and then you shoved a huge 351 Cleveland V8 in the back of it. Um, these cars are just epic to me. I, I love these cars. These cars have right now been trending completely crazy in value. Um, they have probably quadrupled in the last 10 years from what they were selling for. I think a lot of that is because a lot of people are really starting to take notice again. Because when these cars first came out, these cars had tons of notice. They had tons of, of look and they were very unique on the road. Um, years later, uh, a small company in Wisconsin called the Ring Brothers, <laughs> they went ahead and re-imaged a Pantera. And if you haven't seen it, go to their website at the Ring Brothers. I think it's ringbrothers.com. It, it was one of the featured cars at SEMA about three or four years ago. Um, they really took and I think put a fire underneath the Pantera movement uh, that was already kind of churning in the background. So. Here we have what we're offering. We're offering this red one. And it shows the original wheels, which honestly, the original wheels, crazy enough, um, were kind of hard to come by. A lot of people took these wheels off um, because of them being all aluminum. They pitted, things of that nature. Um, this one in the back. And let's see if we can lift it up. So you can see slightly <laughs> where the motor sits. Uh, if, if you are a fan of the Toyota MR2 like I am, not that I'm gonna compare this to the MR2, but a, a mid-engine. Uh, and it's kind of cool that you can kind of see the mid-engine sunk in there, uh, you know, more so like the Boxster and the Cayman. Uh, so, you know, kind of a unique thing. Some of the older technology as far as trying to keep this car cool, which was one of its big downfalls. Uh, you can see that they've got open ductwork here. You can see on the sides, the venting on the sides to push air back into this engine, uh, which it needed. I mean, again, this was the cool part about being a really cool Italian Ferrari-esque styling, but just tons of American grunt and noise in the back. Um, they made different versions of them. Some had spoilers, some did not. Um, and we're gonna get a look at the interior, actually. So you can see some of the cool nuances inside of it. But some of the cool and unique things, of course, the steering wheel is not uh, the factory steering wheel, but it does have the unique emblems on the Di Tommaso Pantera. And there's a lot of folklore onto what that actually means, the symbolism of it. Um, I'm sure that there's gonna be some Pantera fans out there that should comment below on what the, the, the true meaning of the emblem is. But, you know, very, very, very cool interior, very European. You have your gated shifter, um, kind of like the Lamborghini Espada. I think in the middle of everything, they kind of gave up on where to put the radio. So they just shoved it in there sideways, which I think is really, really unique because there was really little effort spent on you know the, the sound system this wasn't a car for a sound system this was this was this was a race car um all your gauges lined up kind of like a fighter cockpit um but you know early look looks at you know full leather dashboard things in 73 that only ferrari was really doing nobody else was so this was just a unique look back into um some of the cool stuff that the 70s produced that did get overlooked for some time but now really are starting to, to blossom and if you're somebody that's putting a portfolio together for a collection this is something that i would definitely definitely be looking at purchasing to add to a collection so let's move on to, to a newer car that we got in inventory that again is very unique and kind of pays homage to some of the older cars of past like i was saying we we're looking at the pantera so let's take a look at a newer car that we have in the inventory that does pay homage to some of the older cars that were out there so this is what what, what we have behind me is a 488 Ferrari but it's a 70th anniversary car so for the 70th anniversary Ferrari commissioned each model of each car to pay homage to an original sports car and or race car so this car pays homage to the Dino Competition which was this exact color scheme it was yellow and you're gonna see with a pretty striking blue interior 
Um, these cars are really, really cool and unique. And again, talking about cars that are going to appreciate, uh, this is definitely something that will continue to gain appreciation and also gain the attention of a lot of collectors in this market. So outside, unmistakably, this is just a 488 Ferrari. And I hate to use the word just, but it is a 488 Ferrari. Some of the cues on the outside you're gonna see is of course all the badging on the down to the bottom that says 70th and of course it recounts the year of when Ferrari was conceived and the year it is now. On the inside is where things really start to take off a little bit with this car. So on the inside of this vehicle, as was the Dino Competition, this car has blue carpeting. Uh, this client decided to make this carpeting Alcantara. Just very, very striking. Towards the back, you're gonna see the nameplate showing inspired by the Dino 206 Competition of 1967. In the back in the engine bay and towards the outside, you're gonna see a lot of visual carbon fiber or external carbon fiber. The carbon fiber in the engine bay was an option. And we're gonna to get to the front trunk and we're gonna show you where the plaque is to show all the options of the vehicle and some of the other unique things that came with the 70th anniversary. So some of the cool things that were in the front trunk that came with this car when it was built, uh, and a lot of it to commemorate uh, the 70th anniversary. So the big thing you get is you get a nice leather bound table book with all the 70th anniversary cars. And of course, there are car S commemorating the original car, the Dino 206 Competition, which how cool, you know, I mean, how cool to have that. So that's something that comes with it. Another item is the hand sketching that went into the actual making of the vehicle. Uh, again, something else really cool and unique that comes with the 70th anniversary cars, which kind of makes this stand out amongst other 488s. And lastly, one of my favorites is you get a beautiful carbon fiber box when opened up. We chose not to unwrap this. We're gonna allow the, the, the new owner, if they choose to unwrap this, unwrap this, but you get a model of your car that fits nicely in there. And then of course you put your Ferrari key right there. So again, super cool, super unique, something that makes it stand out and something that we just got into inventory that you may have passed by when you look through the inventory just thinking it was another yellow 488 coupe. Uh, so we're gonna move on. We're gonna check out another one of the cars that came in uh, new to inventory that is Again, new and old, and you'll see what I mean when we look at it. Uh, so let's go over and take a look at that. So like I had said when we were leaving the 488, uh, we have something that is old and new. <laughs> so, and I think some of you may have gotten what I meant by that. So we have a Backdraft Racing uh, 1965 Shelby Cobra. Um, the Backdraft Racing Company has really taken the Cobra cars and just breathe a whole new amount of life into them. Um, their fit and finish is next to none, which when a lot of people remember some of the companies out there, uh, the fit and finish did not do any justice to the original Cobra cars. Uh, so these have just really taken huge leaps and bounds in coming as close as you could possibly humanly get to owning an original uh, Shelby Cobra. Uh, this is done in the blue with the white stripes, which I absolutely love. And we're gonna open the bonnet here and take a look at the big, awesome, amazing V8 motor. <laughs> Just w words are beside anybody when they look at this, when they look at the motors in these cars. I mean, this car is literally a motor and transmission and no weight at all. <laughs> so the power is immense. The, the feeling is visceral when you're driving it down the street and with the side pipes blasting out the side of the doors, these cars are just absolutely a riot to watch, to drive, to be a passenger in. They're just amazing, amazing vehicles at crazy ridiculous prices. Uh, I mean, the prices that these cars go for and these cars are offered at compared, of course, to the original Shelby are different worlds, but even compared to some of the very good cars that had been out there for recreations for Shelby's. The Backdraft Company does so many different versions of this. This probably is going to be my favorite because it has the, the, it has the original 427 motor inside of it. Um, it doesn't have any of the cool stuff that they do. Even though a lot of people do like, you can get diamond quilting inside and things of that nature. This one is very, what I would call, 
a true heritage to the car. The wood steering wheel, the original shifter bent forward, uh, the original cockpit gauges, which were very sparse and very, you know, very analog. Um, you have the four-point racing harnesses inside of it. Uh, just an extremely cool look at somebody else's vision of what this car was. And their vision didn't change much, which I, I really like. Backdraft really paid full respect to the original Shelby Cobra in this. So when you drive it, you can come about as close as you're going to come to driving an original Shelby Cobra. Uh, one of the last cars we're going to show you is again something new to inventory, something that I've done a couple videos on. I just can't stop talking about them. Uh, just an amazing car and of course it's going to be a manual transmission. So let's go over and take a look at it. Okay, we're going to end this review <laughs> with again something that I said last right when we were by the Cobra. Something that I've reviewed a couple times. I can't put as much emphasis as I can on how special these cars are uh, and a lot of them not only being it's a 2009 Aston Martin DBS, the DBSs alone are very unique and very, very much sought after, but this car being an actual manual transmission version of the DBS makes it outer worldly when it comes to collectability and to me the just amazement of driving. Uh, so when we walk around this DBS, you know, some of the things that just absolutely love Aston for is the look of this car. The look of this car is just sleek, it's sexy, exterior carbon fiber or exposed carbon fiber towards the outside. This one has metallic paint that has metal fleck in it that I don't think we're going to pick up in here, but it has red metal fleck in it. So when the sun hits it, it almost looks like it's on fire, which is exactly what Aston Martin wanted to do. Some of their paint jobs or paint schemes are just absolutely amazing. Uh, this one we just got into stock, so now we actually have two manual transmission DBSs. And again, we talk about appreciation, we talk about cars with future value. They made so few of these. We are impossibly, incredibly blessed to have two in stock and both in very unique colors. Uh, let's go to the inside and of course look at what makes it extremely special to me being the manual transmission and then some of the features inside uh, of the DBS and you can see why I hold this car very near and dear to me as something that needs to be in my collection and I think that in future years this is going to be something that people are going to look at and they're going to just completely flip over seeing an actual manual transmission DBS. Okay, so let's get the elephant out of the room. Yes, this is why I absolutely love this car. <laughs> manual transmission V12 English supercar. It doesn't get better than that for me. Uh, you know, I, I absolutely, absolutely have always loved Astons. I love the way they look. I love the way they sound. I love the engineering. But to have the, the six-speed paired to the V12 is just world changing if you've never driven one. The DBS in itself is an amazing car to drive. The manual transmission just like with the Ferraris and we talked about the gated man manual transmissions and those and how those change the driving habits of that vehicle. This changes the driving habits of this vehicle immensely. It just again words can't say. Inside of it you know it's kind of a refreshing look because new cars now are filled with tons of OLED screens, tons of buttons. This is a strictly business cockpit. This has analog gauges. Really no glitz and glamour. It's strictly utilitarian. This car is meant to do one thing and one thing only. Go extremely fast and make all the right noises. Everything else was an afterthought. And in some ways, compared to new technology, some people don't like that. Uh, I don't even know if this car streams Bluetooth to my phone. I don't know if I'd ever turn the radio on if I owned it. <laughs> so there are some things that, that are definitely afterthoughts inside of the car, but some of the forethoughts of the vehicle being the manual transmission, I think is going to continue to make this car special. It's gonna to continue to appreciate, and it's absolutely, definitely something that if you've considered owning an Aston and considering a DBS and are a car collector, with a portfolio that wants to expand it, this is an opportunity to get into a vehicle at a price point that has tons of room for growth. We're going to continue to try to bring you some of the cars that we like that come into inventory and of course some of the new cars as they come in. So if you guys have any comments that you guys want to share with us below, what would you like to see? You're going through the website, hey could you guys do a, a short video on that? Let us know. You know, we're definitely here to do that stuff. We definitely cover it with Kenan and I and some of the reviews that we do. But on the inventory reviews, we definitely want to show stuff that you guys want to see. So 
Drop some comments below. If you guys have any questions, of course, you guys know you can always get, get me here at marshallgoldman.com. You can also get me if you want to DM on Instagram at Arthur the Car Guy. Um, and again, if there's anything you guys have any questions about, by all means, drop comments uh, or contact me directly. So until next inventory review, we'll see you.